city. Okay. So they say it's better if one man dies, dies than the whole nation. Whole nation. Okay. So let me ask this because this is something that I don't know. Um, was this when, the thing that you forgot previously? No, 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 it wasn't. I just it slipped my mind. But okay. what I wanted to ask is, in, in the Quran, is Jesus referred to as the Messiah? Yeah, 11 and, times. And, and what does that mean? What does the, the, the anointed one or the Christ, because it means the anointed one, yeah. but what does that mean actually? So it, it means someone who's been appointed yeah. or uh, anointed by God into a religious office. Right. So in the context of Jesus being God's prophet, right. so he's now in pro prophet office. Right. So appointed by God to be his representative. Right, so, I see. So you know in the Bible you have like many passages that are like divine agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, in the Bible it says like in the New Testament, um, God, God said, honor your father and mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he marks... Mark's Gospel. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but in Matthew's Gospel, it says, Moses says, yeah, yeah. honor your father and mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mark says, God said. Yeah. But Matthew says, Moses said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're not contradictions. Yeah. It just means that Moses, he's in God's office. Like right. he's God's Spokesman. appointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And speaking on behalf of God. Right, okay. So Messiah means that Jesus was God's deputy on earth. Like God appointed him. Is anyone else prophet. in the Quran known as the Messiah? Not in the Quran, no. But in the Bible, as you know, there's like Cyrus, for yeah, example. Yeah, Cyrus the is the anointed one. Vision, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Um, it's in Isaiah chapter 45. 45, yeah, yeah I, know, I, know this, I know the scripture. Um, you know okay. what's interesting about Isaiah is that in Isaiah chapter uh, 64 verse 8, yeah. um, it's, it's addressed to God and yes. they say, O Jehovah or yeah. O Yahweh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you are our father. Right. So they call him father in the Old Testament. But they don't say, you Yahweh are our father, son and Holy Spirit. Right. They only say father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only one who's, who is Yahweh is the father. Right, okay. okay. Uh, so Jehovah. Yeah, O, o Jehovah, you are the... our father. Yeah. Right. Now... The thing is, what I believe anyway, and I know it's you've explained it earlier on, is that when in, 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 in John chapter 8, when Jesus says, I am, uh, before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. The reason that they're picking up stones to stone him, because in chapter 10, verse 30 and onwards, they pick up stones to stone him again, when he says, I and my father are one. Do you okay. remember that? Yeah. And then he, they say, why, he says, why are you stoning me? They say, for the good work we're stoning you not, but for... Are you being a man making yourself God, putting yourself in the place of God? Mm -hmm. So, for me, it, it looks like in those two chapters that Jesus is making a claim that they're not happy with and they want to stone him for it. Mm -hmm. So, in John chapter 8, when he makes that claim of before Abraham was, I am, we believe, or I believe anyway as Christians, he's taking the name of God, which was given to Moses, because when you read Exodus chapter 3, I believe it's chapter 3, when you look at where it, it, it says the oh, Lord wow, there, yeah. he sa it says Jehovah. And if you look up Jehovah there, it means the self-existent one. Self-existent oh, okay. one. So what I believe that, I know it's not, a, it's not an easy thing to, for, especially for Muslims to, to accept. But what I see there is that Jesus is saying very strangely that Jehovah, the self-existent one, He's saying I am the self existent You know, have you heard of a Catholic scholar by the name of Raymond E. Brown? No, I've not. So, R Raymond Brown has written like two volume commentaries to John's Gospel. Right. And when it comes to John chapter 10 verse 30, yeah. um, he says, you know the word one? Yes. Um, basically, grammatically, it's neuter gender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it doesn't refer to a person, but it refers to a thing or an inanimate yes. uh, object. Yeah. So, within this context, it's news to mean in an organized national right. or like in a purpose sense right, right, so right. he basically says even though in later generations of Christians yeah, yeah, like yeah. in the church council yeah. they use this as evidence of Jesus claiming to be God yeah. but in the gospel of John itself yeah. the word there that's being used is in reference to um, Jesus and the Father being one in purpose as okay. being okay, one organization play. to be honest I believe it, that yeah, I believe grammatically that. the word itself 
is neuter gender. Okay. It doesn't okay. refer to a person. No, no, no. I believe that, and I, I, yeah. I, I believe that purpose and mission and yeah, yeah. I understand yeah, that. Yeah. I, I think but, the, but the, you're right about them picking up stones to yeah, stone to, him. to kill him. But you know what Jesus says to them, uh, the first sisters. He says, many mighty works have I shown you from the Father, yeah. but which of these do you stone me? All right. So Jesus doesn't think they're stoning him because he's claiming to be God. Yeah. He thinks they're stoning him because he's done to miracles. Mighty works, yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. So Let me that ask even you shows even Jesus didn't understand that they're stoning him because he's claiming to be God. Okay, fair play. Yeah. Now, just one other thing about, I didn't want to really go down the, talking about <laughs> Jesus, but he always ends up there. But well, look, I mean, he's important. So and, let, let, what else are we going to speak about? Let's talk Sin, about Muslim let's talk about Muslim, judgment. Yeah. Judgment okay. time will come. You know, um, what about the way we're living on a day-to-day -day basis now? What are what are we going to be judged on according to the Quran? Yeah, so we'll be judged upon, like you know, we we testify that God alone, yeah. you know, is our Lord. Yes. And um, so, so we can't not say that we were unaware because like M Muslims believe that everyone's born with this kind of natural disposition where they have this natural inclination to monotheism, right. so to, to one God, yeah, yeah, yeah. so every child. Um, so people will be questioned, asked about, you know, like, why did you I've been rejected. Hold on, let me stop yeah. you there and ask you something. You said that naturally they have that inclination to serve the one God? Or, or belief in one God or in one Lord. But that that's that sounds strange it's because... It's known as the Fetera. Okay. Have you heard of this before? I've never heard of it. Okay, the Fetera. So, no, so the there's reason... Traditions, yeah, go on. There's, there's hadiths or traditions of the Prophet. Right. Which the Prophet says to the effect that um, you know, every child is born in the natural state, right? Uh, but it's, um, it's it's the parent that labels the the child religiously, either like as a Jew or as a Christian, right? Uh, but um, every child is born like in this natural uh, state of uh, belief in God. Or oh, oh, belief in God. Okay, yeah. fair play. So, okay. so you know, sometimes Christian philosophers refer. Uh, this to as the um, the moral argument. Oh, right, God. Okay. Have you heard of the moral I've argument? I've never heard of it, okay. but the concept sounds uh, something similar to what is so found in the book of Ecclesiastes, oh, I think, okay. where it says, like, uh, eternity is in your heart, or something like that, to the effect of we have an understanding of the higher power of God, you understand? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's kind of like that, but what I, I thought think Paul was... Paul even says so in Romans chapter 1. Uh, uh, uh. Like they know the invisible the, things of this world yeah. are clearly seen by those. Okay, yeah, they're not, so, so that nobody's so without, is, nobody can be, uh, people will be without excuse basically. Yeah, okay, fine. Effect, yeah. So let me ask you this then. So, what about. Um, uh, uh, so, I guess that would be the judgment. So, yeah, so. so, but this is why I'm asking it because what are Muslims doing? Because we're talking about the Quran and the issue of judgment, because you've only mentioned to me. To believe in the oneness of the Almighty. Yeah. So really, you're telling me, in, for me to prepare for the judgment, I must simply believe that there's one God. That's it. Uh, not to associate or worship others along with that one God. Okay, that's not okay. Not to share yeah. His divinity with others. Okay. And if you're convinced that the Quran is a real message from God, that God is communicating to you, yeah. then you're required to believe in it as well. Okay. Okay. Fair play. So now the only thing just I... Just like those Jews in the time of Jesus, when yeah. they saw Jesus performing miracles, yeah. and you know they were convinced that this was a messenger of God, they were expected to believe in Him yeah. and obey Him. Yeah. But some of them didn't because of the arrogance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, because they didn't want to either give up their kind of status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, okay, fair yeah. play. Now let me ask you this, because Nazam, for me, um, I'm sure because you've read much of the Bible, not you'll know much. there's verses like uh, you'll know there's verses like James chapter two. Uh, so speak and so do as oh, they that okay. shall be judged by the law of liberty. And if you look at the law that he mentions, he begins to quote from the Ten Commandments. You know, in other words, when God looks at us in the judgment, he uses his law to weigh up the way we've lived our lives, right? And so even Jesus said in Matthew... You know, the Greek word there is nomos, I believe. And nomos is the Greek term that's used for Torah. Okay, so the law, the yeah. law of Moses, the, the books of Moses. You know, Paul, in Romans chapter 4, he said yes. we're no longer under the law. 
but we're no longer under the Torah or the Nomos of Moses. Okay. And um, you know Paul's final trip to Jerusalem in yeah, the yeah, book yeah. of Acts? He was actually challenged because James and the elders basically tell him, inform him that they're, they're a bit like these Christians in Jerusalem, they've been informed yeah. that you teach Jews living among Gentiles um, not to follow Moses or yes, to yes. forsake Moses yeah. um, as well as not to circumcise their children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they say to J Paul, take these men who have undergo a vow yeah, yeah, yeah. and pay for their expenses yeah, yeah, for yeah, them yeah, to yeah. have their heads yeah. and so on. Okay. So in this way people would know there's no truth but that you yourself live under obedience to the law, to the Torah. So you say that it, it's, ri it's right to be in obedience to that law or not? Well, in the time of Jesus and the time of the disciples, so yes. prior to the chronic revelation, yeah. uh, people were expected to follow the, the Mosaic law, except where Jesus may have abrogated any specific commandment. But uh, otherwise, they were still following the, the law, because Jesus didn't come to start a new religion. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying, because he said, I came not to destroy the law and the prophets. Exactly. But, but, yeah. but also then, um, when we say that the laws were done away with, we have to be specific what was done away because, uh, well, you know... Well, what does Paul mean when he says in Romans that we're no longer under the law? We're no longer under the, the nomos or the Torah. Okay, so if you look at uh, the laws in Moses, there was a law that was made contrary against us. You'll find it in Deuteronomy chapter 32. It was a law because when you had the sanctuary made, the, the Hebrew sanctuary, inside the most holy place, you had the ark containing the Ten Commandments, and next to that ark was the writings of Moses, the laws given to Moses. Civil laws, a lot of civil, civil laws and religious laws that were given specifically for them. So there are some laws that couldn't apply today. For example, when you were using, uh, you know, sanitation laws, things like that. But also because remember the Hebrew children and the Hebrews had a sacrificial service. Yeah. You know, that they were following. But that sacrificial service came to an end, according to the Bible, when Jesus died, according to the well, Bible. According to Paul, but according to the book of Acts, the sacrifices continued up until when the temple was destroyed in AD 70. But prior to that, the Christians, they continued to make offerings or sacrifices at the temple. Like the Nazareth vow that they underwent was part that they would go to the temple and they would make a, a sin offering. As, yeah. So you know in the um, book of Numbers, yeah. uh, chapter 6, verse yeah. 10 and 11, okay, the, um, the vow. Yeah, it basically says to make a sin offering okay, okay. Uh, to complete the vow. Okay, so for, for me, so, Paul, so go on, go on. Go on. So, so Paul did this in Acts chapter 18. Yeah, yeah, 18, the vow that he took. And also in Acts 21, the, the Christians in Jerusalem as well, Okay. they had made a vow and Paul paid for them to, to have their heads shaved as shaved well as yeah, yeah, okay. I remember made an offering at the temple as well. Okay, so... Uh, so they didn't stop. The only reason why they stopped was because the temple was destroyed about 30 years after Jesus. Okay, I'll need to look into that and come back to that. Sorry, because, 30 um, or 40 years roughly. So okay. it's the AD 70, so... Okay, Jesus, yeah, no, no, the destruction yeah. of Jerusalem. Okay, fine. Um, so what I was going to say is... Um, so the issue is, coming back to the issue of judgment, uh, the Bible really gives a lot of information, not only about serving one God, it gives a lot of information about the, the way we're living. So for example, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, written by Solomon, King Solomon, it says, uh, it says, for this is the whole duty of man, chapter 12. God yeah, shall bring too. every work into judgment with every secret thing. Now, secret things happen where? In the mind, in the, the heart? The whole duty of man is to obey God's commandments. Commandments, right? But, yeah. So, the, so is the keeping of the commandments... Sorry. That's all right. It's just not... Uh, yeah, sorry, carry on. So it's a keeping of the commandments, but then in relation to that, immediately after that, he says, why? Because God will bring every work into judgment oh, with okay. every secret thing. So, yeah. for us... It's more than just come in and, you know, I'm not discriminating against or criticizing the guys that come here every Sunday and talk about these things, but really, if we're not living the right life, then what point is there on you saying that you're worshiping the one God? 
because your, your secret life that you're doing is corrupt. God is saying, if you want to prepare yeah, for judgment... It's not a dichotomy either. It's, it's both because um, you can like be like doing good, like doing right, like giving charity, feeding yeah. the homeless. Yeah. But at the same time, you can be worshiping others along with God or believing like in many other gods. Yeah. So, in that sense, like you know, you're doing all these good actions, but at the same time, you're blaspheming against God. Do you believe but some then, Muslims do that? Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't deny that. But also in the same way, you can be a monotheist. Yeah. But at the same time, you're cheating and stealing. Yeah. And so you're not uh, being true to your statement. You know, that none has the right to be worshipped except Almighty God. Because if you believed in God and yeah. in the last day, yeah. um, then you wouldn't be like defrauding people or okay. fair play. You fair know, play. cheating or stealing. So, yeah, it's both. So, I think the book of James even says it as well. Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, so do you think faith that without works is dead? Or yeah, faith without effect. works. Okay, yeah. that's fair play. So do you think then there could be or there should be at least an emphasis not only on because I mean you come to Speaker's Corner you're definitely going to talk about is Jesus God uh, <laughs> you're yeah, going to talk about course. the one true God you're going to talk about three Trinity and so forth and yeah. okay you know people are interested and they want to hear and of course it's important yeah. but don't you think there should be an emphasis as well on what's happening in our minds the things we're thinking about on a daily basis. You know, people are struggling with uh, uh, sin sin sinful thoughts, you know. Yeah, Some yeah. people have sinful thoughts against their brothers. Yeah. Some people speak words in their own homes. The words they speak are not kind words. True. You, you yeah. understand what I'm saying? But in terms of thoughts, um, you're, you're not responsible like in terms of thoughts, but in terms of like what you choose to do with them. Okay, no, so no, I, am, I agree. You, so you can be angry with your brother, um, but it doesn't mean you should act upon that anger and do something bad. Okay, fair play. The uh, Bible says, "Be angry and sin not." Okay. So, so, so that's okay. fine. I didn't know that. But, but then, then what about? So, obviously, there is a time in your mind. For example, if you're thinking about it constantly, you're yeah. then fallen into sin because Jesus said, "You look on on a woman and you're lusting after her. You haven't done the act, but you've committed adultery because you're thinking about doing that act." Yeah, yeah. So there is a point, at least in time, where the thought comes in, and either at that time we're saying, "Almighty, please help me not to think these things." We're trying to put our minds on something else and, and you know, we're getting victory in a sense through the power of God. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There is, I believe there is a need and an em uh, because look, many Muslims and many Christians are going through today. They're looking at billboards, seeing naked women. They're seeing violence in some of the movies. Yeah, yeah. These things are affecting the mind. I agree. But, but, but what's within your capacity or what's within your control, um, that, that's what you're responsible. So um, what, that's, the, that's the main thing I'm wanting to know. Yeah. What, is the, what is the main capacity that we are capable of as individuals as we are prepared for paradise? What is the capability of, of us? What, can, what are we capable of? Yeah, so we take it a step at a time. Okay, step at a time, okay, fair play. So the first thing is to like have right belief. Okay, right God. belief, fine, okay. And yeah. What else? Understand like what God wants from us. Okay. Um, and then to try our best, you know, to submit and to follow His will. Okay. But also with that, we also try to seek His mercy as well. Of course. I don't, I don't uh, want us to belittle uh, that. We, we yeah. ask God, you know, to uh, forgive us for our shortcomings. Yes, of course. Um, so forgiveness and mercy, that's understood. We all yeah. need that. Without it, we won't be anywhere. But what I'm saying is what I see yeah, is it's possible for an individual to have right belief and live for more than 30 years and yet the way he treats certain people is like it's like the devil. Yeah, I agree. Do you yeah, see what I'm yeah. saying? So I believe, and this is what I've heard from a Muslim, my yeah. cousin, named Ridwan as well. This is what he told me many years ago. He said to me this. He said, I asked him what must I do to get to Jannah, to paradise? It's the main question. This is what he told me. He said, obviously, the right belief in the Almighty, you, as you mentioned already. But he said this. He said, through our Iman, through our faith, the Almighty can give us power. He can, he can work in our hearts so that each day we choose to do what is right yeah, instead of what is wrong. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I agree but let me ask that. you yeah, this. Yeah. Can the Almighty give us that strength each day to do what is right at all times? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, God gives us the strength. 
yeah. but it's up to us whether how we choose to use that guidance or how we choose to use that strength. Okay. We can either use it for good or, or for, for bad. bad. Yeah. But let me but ask you God this. God isn't going to force us. Okay, he's not going to uh, force us. Fine, he gives us free will. But that's but why we have judgment as well. Okay, so judgment because will come. Because we have the free will and so we are responsible for our actions. Okay. Of how we choose to use that free will. Okay, fair that play. Now us. let me ask you this. Do you think that a, a Muslim who's struggling with smoking or drinking, let's say drinking, right? Is drinking a sin in Islam? Yeah, intoxication. Yeah. Okay, intoxi yeah, yeah. let's say intoxication is a sin, right? Yeah. Do you think that the Almighty can help a Muslim that is truly, he really wants to stop because he wants to do what is right in the sight of the Almighty? Yeah. Can the Almighty help him to stop? Yes, of course. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Can he help him to stop so that he doesn't drink ever till the rest of his life? Yes, Is that possible? Of course. Yeah. So do you think then, just, I just want a yes or no. Okay. Do you think that it's possible for me, maybe I'm not drinking, maybe I'm not smoking, but there's mm. things I'm struggling with. Is it possible for the Almighty to give me strength each day so that each day, because of my connection and the strength that I have with him, that I'm only choosing to do what is right. Is that possible? Yes, of course. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Well, that, it's, it's a process. It's a process. So, so I'm not it, saying you're going to be... So, so we have a relationship with of course, God. Of course. Uh, and that relationship is something that's continuous and ongoing. Yeah. Just as long as you do not turn your back away yes. from God. Okay. But you, you know, continue to um, you know, seek Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. Listen, Nazam, okay. it's been a blessing no, to talk Ridwan. to you again. By the way, Ridwan, if you want any of the like references or yeah, 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 if you've got any more questions, then just message me on WhatsApp. Or I will do. So, I will do. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah, I know um, the guys, they wanted to. Do, do you want to go out? We're going to go for lunch or for me dinner. Um, um, I'm going to yeah. find my okay. friend. Yeah. He's around. We might do. I'm not sure yet. Okay, but no, uh, okay. we'll find my friend. Well, you got my number. So, I got your number. Yeah. We'll catch up. Yeah. We'll catch up. I'll all keep right. in touch. Oh. Thanks, man. Thanks for that chat. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Okay. All the best. Okay. Take care. You too. Guys? Oh, uh, red one. Yeah, there's something. Do you want me to... Uh,